On my fall table this year, I thought it'd be great to have some fresh eucalyptus. Then I thought, hmm, I wonder if I could make my own. So that's what I did. In today's show, I'm going to show you how I made three different types of eucalyptus. The willow, the silver dollar, and the baby blue. And how you can make a pretty realistic bouquet using just a few sheets of paper. To make my eucalyptus pieces, I'm using floral vine paper wire in the color green and brown. 12 by 12 sheets, different shades of green colored paper, soft chalk pastels, a pencil, scissors, one eight inch hole punch, and the hot glue gun. Okay, let's start by making the most popular one, the baby blue. And I'm gonna start with this green floral wire. This is wire that is covered in green paper. And this will be perfect for the stem. I want my pieces to be between 15 and 20 inches long. So for each piece, I'm cutting the wire at about 36 inches. Then I'm gonna bring the two ends together and lightly fold that wire in half. But I wanna leave a little bit of a loop at the top. And I'm gonna grab that top loop and start twisting it. And I'm leaving the loop about a fourth or an eighth of an inch as I twist downward. All the way down to the end. And I'm gonna cut the ends to make it even. And after it's all twisted, this piece ends up being about 17 inches long, which is perfect for my um, baby blue. Um, what I wanna do next is I left this loop in here because I want the top part to be a little bud at the top. So I'm gonna shape this into a sort of diamond shape. And I'm gonna make a couple more of these to be the base for my baby blues. So for my petals, I'm using green paper. I had this pad with green, different shades of green, and I'm gonna use this. Um, this is sort of a card stock. I would like the paper to be a little bit thinner, but since I have it, I'm gonna try this card stock. Also, I got this from Michaels, and I think this pad is on sale right now, so I'll leave a link to where you can get that. So I think I found the colors I'm gonna use for my eucalyptus. This bluish green I'll use for the baby blue and this sagey green I think I'll use for the other pieces. So let's start with my blue green and make my petals for my baby blue. Now this is a square sheet. It's 12 by 12 and I'm gonna start by folding it in half and I'm gonna fold it in half one more time. So the leaf on the eucalyptic baby blue is pretty much circular. It looks like a circle. So I'm gonna start by drawing circles, different sizes from large to small. I'm gonna start with the largest and I'm just using a little candle vault. And the size of the circle is about two and one fourth. I'm drawing three of these on this sheet. For the next size down, I'll use this little shot glass, the large part of it, and I'll use this to make three more smaller circles. And this circle is about one and three eighths. And I'll turn that over and use the bottom for a smaller size. I'm also making three circles with this. And this circle is about one and one eighth inch. For my next size down, I'm using the tape dispenser, the inside of it, to make a circle that's about seven eighths. I'm also tracing three of these. For my smaller circle, I'm using the inside of a cap of a marker, and this one is about five eighths. I'm drawing four of these. So this is what I have. I have five different sizes, three of each, except for the smallest one I have four of. So I'm counting 16 petals times four. 
that'll give me 64 petals, different sizes. So let's cut these out and see how many stems I could make with this one sheet. So I am laying these out in stacks of two, the way they're going to go on the flower. Each um, stem will have two petals facing each other. So it looks like I'll be able to make three stems with this one sheet of paper. Now after cutting these pieces out and laying them out, I had three extra small circles and I'm just going to set those aside. But I'm going to take the top row of the smallest circles and I'm using that to make the little bud at the top of this stem. I'm going to trace the shape onto the smallest circle and with those two pieces stacked I'm going to cut that shape out. I'm putting some hot glue on the wire and attaching the little bud shape on top of that and on the bottom of it. And I'm just going to squeeze those edges together mainly at the bottom. Now I'm going to prepare my petals to go on to the stem and I'm just going to um, stack all this this whole row here. And this is just a little extra step. You don't really have to do this. But I'm going to cut out what looks like two little waves at the bottom of this piece, the petal, um, just to make it a little more realistic where it attaches to the stem. And I'm going to use a hole punch, a 1 8 inch hole punch, to punch right at the bottom in the center of that little dip. And the hole is just so I can feed the petals through the stem. So I'm just going to do this to all the other pieces. Now the only problem I have with this paper I got out of the pad is that the edges are white because the inside of the paper is white. So I think I'm going to use my green marker to coat the edges. You can though buy individual sheets at Michael's that is green all the way through. It does cost a dollar a sheet for a 12 by 12 sheet but as you can see you can get three stems out of one sheet so it may be worth it to buy individual sheets. Now to make these leaves look more realistic this is a piece that an artificial leaf that I had and I'm just using it to see what the pattern looks like. I'm going to use a pen, a closed pen, to make indentation into the leaves. So I have two leaves stacked and I'm going to draw some veins in the leaves. One down the middle and some out to the sides like this. And also inside the veins there are these little pattern textures. So I'm just going to do like little crisscrosses and all over the piece. And these are a bit lighter than the outside but it's kind of random crisscrosses just to give it a little texture so that it looks something like this. Now most of the time the eucalyptic leaf has this waxy coating over it. It's kind of like a silvery blue. So to recreate that I'm going to use soft chalk pastels, gray paws. And I found a kind of a bluish gray silver color. And while holding the chalk flat on the side, I'm just going to brush the color over the leaf. And it's going to just coat the relief areas, giving that leaf that waxy look. And I'm going to do that on both sides, the front and the back. And also on the next leaf, which should still have some indentation. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is put these two together and fold the center. I'm going to give it a little bit of a three-dimensional shape. And then I'm going to use a skewer just to round the leaf a little bit, round the edges. The leaf is basically flat, so I'm not going to do that much but I just want to give it a little bit of a shape 
and here is my leaves with that more realistic look. Now we can start assembling these. So I did the same thing with all the other leaves, gave it that waxy look, and I'm going to start with the smallest leaf. I'm putting the bottom of the stem in through the hole and I'm feeding the leaves all the way up to the top of that bud that I created. I'm working with two leaves at a time. I'm going to move the first one up and put a little hot glue right underneath, right in the center of that hole. The hole is a little bigger than the stem, so I want the hot glue to sort of cover up that hole. And then I'm going to move the second leaf up so that it's adjacent to the first one, right on the opposite side of it. And just kind of hold those in place for a few minutes until the glue solidifies a little bit. And then um, you can shape it a little more. I like to put a little, squeeze the center, put a little angle in it. Now I'm moving on to my next set of leaves. I'm going to leave a little bit of a space. It's about, I think about a half an inch down from the first one. And I'm doing the same thing. Put a little glue at the bottom. This time I am alternating. This time I am rotating my leaves about 90 degrees so that each set of leaves will alternate in direction. So they look like this. Also, as the leaves get a little bit bigger, I um, give it a little more, a tiny bit more space in between um, each section. And again, alternate in a direction as I go down. And here is a finished one all put together. And even if you didn't do all the indentation and the waxing, the one on the right I did to show you what it looks like plain, just to compare the two. So if you don't want to do all the extras, you can still have a pretty nice, realistic baby blue eucalyptus. And with a bunch of them together, it's really hard to tell it's made out of paper. Now the next type of eucalyptus I'm making is a silver dollar. And for this one I'm going to use the brown paper wire for the stem and the branches. I want to make my branches and stem look pretty much like this. This one grows out more like a little tree branch. And the leaves are not grouped in twos, they're more like individual leaves sprouting out. So I'm going to cut a piece that is about 2 yards, 72 inches. I'm going to put the two ends together and go up about 5 inches and start twisting it downward all the way to the end. And then I'm left with a stem with this big loop at the top. Now to create my first branch, I'm going to start from the right side and Pull a loop out about maybe five to eight inches. And starting from the stem, I'm going to twist it up to about maybe two inches. On the left side of that second stem, I'm going to make a little loop. This is about one inch, and I'm going to twist that all the way to the end. Then going back to the bottom of that first branch, I am going to twist a big loop up to about the center of the branch that I just made. Now I'm going to make another loop on the right side about an inch and twist that all the way up to this top. So I'm going to keep doing that alternating from left to right until I get all the way up to the top until I have a full little branch brought in from my stem. Now I'm going to make three branches, one long one in the center and two shorter ones on the side. So I'm going to take part of that big loop and pull out about maybe 10 to 12 inches 
and bring it down starting at the first stem and twisting it up from the base. So I don't want the branches to line up so I'm going to twist it a little maybe um, slightly above the first branch stem and start making my branches on this one. And this one I followed the same process. This one I got five little stems on here. So now it's time to do my last branch. And then I'll just use pliers to close the loops at the ends. But this is totally random. All you need to do is make sure you alternate the stems left and right. But it doesn't matter how many you make. I have about 15 little stems on here so I can put 15 leaves on this branch. To make my silver dollar leaves, I'm going to be using a sagey green color. Which is a little less blue than the blue I used to make my baby blues. So it'll be a nice variation in the color. So to make these leaves, again, I'm going to fold the sheet in half and in half again. And I'm just going to trace this artificial leaf that I had already. Um, it's about the shape of the silver dollar. So I drew as many of the big leaves as I could on the sheet. And then I started drawing smaller ones. And those are rough small ones and then I drew even smaller ones so in the spaces that fit so I have about 11 leaves on this sheet so I cut all of my pieces out and I have four each so I have 44 leaves and like I did with the last plant I want to draw my veins inside the leaves and I'm going to do this really hard to leave indentations on the sheets below it. Uh, it's best to work with two sheets at a time or rather two leaves at a time. And again I'm going to use my pastel chalk to color it but I'm doing it really light on this one. There's not really that much um, waxing on a silver dollar if there's any but um, I'm going to put a little on here and I'm doing a front and the back of these. Then I'm going to stack them and fold them to shape them and add a little curve on the edges. Now to attach these to my branches, I am going to start with the smallest ones at the bottom of the branch. And I'm using a line of hot glue right at the bottom tip of the leaf. And I'm just going to put it right on the spine there, hold it there for a few minutes. And for the glue, you might want to use the Gorilla glue sticks. It's a little stronger and it might help it stay on. The leaves stay on stronger, especially with the chalk. And here's my silver dollar stem with all the leaves on it. It looks pretty nice, pretty realistic. And I love the subtle variation in the color between this and the baby blue. So I was also able to get three of these branches from one sheet of paper. Now the last eucalyptus I'm making is a willow. And this one is made up of long leaves. And again, I'm going to fold my sheet in fours and this one, um, I'm using the same color as I use for the silver dollar. So I covered up my sheet with a few different size leaves, kind of rounded at the bottom and pointy at the top. And I'm going to cut these out. So I have 11 of these stacks and I arranged them in order by the size. And I'm going to take each stack and fold it down the middle just to make a spine down the middle. I'm also going to curl each end to give it a nice kind of leaf shape. I also have about 44 of these leaves. Now to make my little branches I'm also going to use the brown wire, paper wire. And I'm cutting this at two yards also. Like the last branch, I'm going to bring the two ends together 
and then come up about five inches and start twisting downward. But unlike the last one, instead of making three stems with branches, I'm going to make one long branch. So I'm going to loop the wire to the right about three inches and then twist it all the way to the end. Then going back to that loop at the base, I'm going to start twisting that up about a half an inch and then make another stem branch on the left side. And these stems are a bit longer than the stems that were on the silver dollar. But basically we're doing the same thing. We're alternating left and right. And, and when you finish, you'll have something that looks like this, one long branch with some long stems. So on this one, I'm going to attach the smaller leaves at the bottom and gradually get bigger as I go up. And you have something that looks like this. And these leaves sort of hang down or curl down. So I just want to position the stems so that they fall like the willow leaves do. And for this one, I was able to get four branches out of one sheet. Now I want to use this for my table, for my Thanksgiving table across the center. So I'm going to do another batch of these, but I think right now I have enough to make a, a small bouquet. And I can make a really quick one right now just by bunching the groups together and tying all the stems together. Now I'm just going to push all the stems down into the vase where I have some Spanish moss. And then I can just move the pieces around and arrange them the way I want. I also cut a few pieces of baby blue so I could place them at the top. And now I have a nice little bouquet of greenery. And wow, look at that, a whole eucalyptic arrangement using just three sheets of paper. Ooh, and I just can't wait to try these out on my holiday table. Want more detailed instructions on some of these projects? On my Etsy store, for just a few dollars, you can get instant digital downloads of full color step-by-step -step instructions with templates for some of your favorite projects. And check out my Amazon page where you can pick up my multi-surface acrylic metallic paint back in stock with eight beautiful shimmering colors. You can mix millions of colors and create endless home beauty for indoor and outdoor projects. And while you're there, pick up my Book of Elegant Home Crafts Volume 1. Put all your favorite projects together in one big beautiful colored step-by-step -step instruction book. You can now get separate e-project booklets and also full color printed project booklets will be available on Amazon. On my Amazon page, you'll see all my favorite crafting tools and supplies used on this show, and you can add them all to your cart for the one-click, fast and easy shopping and delivery convenience of Amazon. I'll be working every day to make crafting fun and easy for you. Follow me at Your House of Home and Your House of Home TV on all social media for extra home, food, and gardening tips.